Hey friends, it's Lauren at Mill City Roasters. This week I'm back on the espresso bar and the brew bar to talk about an extraction exercise that I used to use a lot in barista training. This is a concept or an idea that a lot of baristas are familiar with. It's this idea of isolating the layers of your extraction to taste the coffee as it um, evolves and transforms throughout the brew cycle. This can be a really great way to get to know a coffee a little bit better and to start to understand more about what's happening during extraction. Today, we're gonna see what that looks like on a pour over and on an espresso shot because you can do this with both methods. Before we get started, I wanna talk about this machine here that we're gonna be using today. This is the Tone Brewer. Um, this is a new device from a Swiss company called Tone that offers um, essentially endlessly programmable options for pour over. It can go down to very small capacities, which is what we're gonna see today, like a single cup brew, and it can go up to about two liters, so you can brew a full air pot. What's cool about this device is it's tankless. You can see that there's no water chamber on the back side of it. Water is plumbed in directly from our water line, and it has a coiled heating element at the top, which can heat nine grams of water every two seconds. So you get this continuous flow of water that is heated to your exact degree of temperature that you've programmed. This device comes with a couple preset brewing programs for around 500 gram pour overs, 500 gram water weight or 500 milliliter water weight. But you can connect it via USB cord to your laptop, open up the Tone software and program as much detail as you want for a pour over recipe. You can manipulate the amount of water that goes into your bloom, how long your bloom lasts, and then how many pulses, how much agitation, the flow rate, the temperature, and the total water weight that you want for your brew. This is a really cool way to offer a couple different brew recipes if you have different types of coffee on bar. You can also save a couple of the buttons for lower temperature waters. Um, if you're serving white tea or green tea, or something that needs a cooler water temperature. We've just started playing around with the tone here in the roastery, and we're starting to explore ways to um, understand more about if your extraction recipe can cover up or correct mistakes at the roaster. We'll talk more about that in a future video. For today, I'm gonna use this brewer just as if it was a barista assistant. It's got a programmed recipe that I've set here on menu button number two, and it's going to basically give me a pour over recipe that's really similar to what I used to serve in a cafe. It's about 320 milliliters out in a couple different pours um, with a nice long bloom. I've pre-ground uh, about 18 grams of a single origin Peru that's roasted to a medium roast level. And I've pre-wet the paper filter just by turning on one of the menu buttons, letting that spray head sort of shower down and then turning it off again. What I'm gonna do, and the, the way that I'm gonna isolate the layers of this brew cycle are, is I'm going to switch the cup that's underneath the brewer about every minute in one minute intervals. Um, that's gonna allow me to end up with three cups that represent the beginning, middle, and end of the brew cycle. And then I can taste these cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and start brewing. While this coffee is brewing, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how coffee extracts and what we are probably gonna taste. So to begin, I'm going to put my ground coffee in my filter, make sure it's a nice level bed. I'm using a really simple, just like plastic cone-shaped filter here, just for you know the sense of um, showcasing a very simple brew method. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer and start my brew cycle. The water is gonna start pouring instantaneously, again, that uh, that heating element heats up water very, very fast, and the water that's coming out of our shower head is always at the exact temperature that we've programmed, in this case, about 201 degrees. So when I think of how coffee extracts, I like to think of a story that my friend Nathaniel used to tell when he was a coffee educator uh, before me, and I learned this from him. He would say, think of the flavor compounds in a cup of coffee like uh, attendance at a pool party. It sounds a little silly, kind of bear with me here. He said, the beginning of the brew cycle is kind of those people who come to the pool party who can't wait to jump in the pool. 
they jump in with their clothes on. They're really eager. That is about the first minute or minute and a half of your brew cycle. And that represents a lot of the soluble acids and some of the heavier bodied compounds. After the first minute, or maybe the first hour at your pool party, you have some more people who are a little bit more hesitant to get in. Maybe they needed to have some food, some beverage, some time to hang out, kind of warm up to the idea. But now they're getting in the pool. These are our sugars and um, the sweetness and some of the balance that we're looking for in the cup. These are the things that extract during the mid phase of the brew cycle. A lot of these flavors are really kind of like the heart and soul of the coffee, but on their own, they can taste a little bit two-dimensional because they lack some high notes and low notes to balance them out. As we approach the very end of the brew, of the brew cycle, we're talking about people who were a little shy about swimming at the pool party. They were a little hesitant to get in, but when they finally do get in, they're going to stay all night you're going to have to kick them out. And these are bitterness compounds, bitter flavors. And because of the amount of dilution that's happening now, a lot of the more heavy, solid, and stronger flavored compounds have already been extracted. We're getting a lot more water sort of bypassing through these grounds. So this final phase of the brew cycle is going to be thin, watery, bitter, and have a very long lingering finish. If we brew and brew the whole time and try to get a coffee to taste like cup A, it won't work because those acids are very short-lived. Same for cup B. The sugars have an endpoint to when they're no longer available. But this last one, cup C, are bitter compounds. Like I said, they can just go and go. Once this stops uh, dripping, we will have a chance to um, look at these cups all together and then begin to taste them. I'm going to stop the brew cycle at three minutes, which is approaching. And the way I stop the brew cycle, just like with any pour over, is I just pull out my carafe and would set my cone you know, somewhere on the counter on a cup to drain. So if we kind of lean in here quickly to look at these cups, we can see that we have very, very low volume in this uh, first cup. Only a couple, maybe a half ounce, maybe three quarters of an ounce of coffee. It's very dark and it seems like it really sticks on the walls. If we were wine people, we, we would say that the legs of this coffee are really long and it's, uh, it's really looking very viscous. The second cup kind of goes halfway up and it looks like a very standard cup of black coffee. There's nothing really too noticeable about it. it has good color, good depth. This third cup is almost full, and I can tell by looking at it that this is a pretty weak brew. It looks um, pretty transparent, pretty light in color, and overall pretty heavily diluted. The cupping bowls that I'm using today are from Origami. Uh, my friend Anita sent me some, and uh, they're for cupping, but she says she also really likes to drink tea and coffee out of them because they're really nice to hold, and I think they're very beautiful. They stack together beautifully. They're just really great cups. So I'm going to go in with my cupping spoon and try each one of the, these. When I used to do this in exercise during trainings, I would ask people, what do you think is going to taste the best? People who like the stronger cup would say, oh, I think number one will taste best. A lot, a lot of people would think that number two is going to taste best because it's kind of the, um, the Goldilocks cup, right? A little bit of everything. Um, and in reality, I would tell them, you know, not to spoil it, but none of these coffees taste great <laughs> because you need all three parts of this coffee to make a really great cup. So let's go in. Cup one, super viscous, syrupy. Ooh, and it's very intense. The flavor is sharp. Um, I'm getting a lot of citrus, a lot of red fruit, but there's a note that's almost metallic. Sometimes it tastes kind of salty. And that is um, what, this is an extreme example of what a very under extracted coffee might taste like. If your coffee has notes like this that are super sharp, really dense, very compact, and really um, aggressive, we would say you need to be extracting longer, adding more water, or potentially changing your grind so that you're not, um, you're not getting this amount of strength in the cup. Let's go on to cup B. Just tastes like a great cup of coffee, except that it's lacking body and there's no finish to it. 
It's very flat and two-dimensional. It tastes like the Peru that we're brewing, but it's like the soul has been sucked out of it. It's just kind of lifeless, a little boring. If I was served a coffee like this, I would say, oh, you know, it's fine. There's nothing offensive or, um, you know, super low quality about it, but it, it has so much more potential. Um, I would feel like it needs some of cup number one here to add some vibrancy and some intensity of flavor um, and also to boost up the body a little bit. All right, cup three. There's not much to this cup. It tastes very watery and thin, very lightweight. The main flavor I get is the flavor of the roast. So it tastes very toasted, kind of bitter, a little roasty. The lingering finish kind of stays on your palate, but it's not a pleasant finish. It feels like something, you know, has just kind of a long aftertaste, and you kind of want to wash it out of your mouth. Again, all three of these um, components are required to brew a really nicely balanced cup of coffee. But doing an exercise like this shows us so much about what happens during extraction, and it teaches us a lot about the flavors of the coffee. If I'm working with a new uh, single origin and I want to understand the full spectrum of flavor, I might do this to kind of get a sense of the high notes, the low notes, the middle notes, and really sort of paint a full profile of the coffee. If I'm trying to dial in a pour over recipe at home or figure out a brewer um, cycle that I'm happy with, I would use these as reference points. Remember, if my coffee tastes a lot like cup number one, I probably have a recipe that's under extracting the coffee and I need to figure out a way to extract more. If my coffee tastes a lot like number three, I need to figure out how to extract less. This is an over extracted cup of coffee. We can do the same thing on the espresso bar. Let's see what that looks like. So I did this a lot also in barista training. Um, there's a lot of names for this uh, practice. I've heard it called like a salami shot before. I don't really know where that comes from, something about the layers or the slices of the espresso. But we're going to do something very similar. I've dialed in this espresso to be a little bit of a longer shot. It's about 35 second extraction, and it's extracting a full two ounces uh, of, of espresso. I'm going to go ahead and grab my dose. And since I would usually do this tasting as part of a training, I like to have two cups for each extraction so I could have two people tasting these or I could taste it with another person. So I'm going to line up my cups because espresso moves a lot faster. I've purged my group head, wiped my portafilter, immediate insert, start brewing. Now again, the first wave of the extraction is going to be intense, syrupy, and, in, and very viscous. It takes usually about eight or nine seconds to see that espresso first dropping. So I'm going to give this espresso just a few seconds to get kind of caught up. Now we're in that midsection, so I'm going to switch those cups quickly for the next 10 seconds. Everything's running a lot faster now. And from 25 to 35, I'm going to get the end of that shot. It takes a little bit of practice. <laughs> cool. We see something so similar to what we saw in the brew bar. As this coffee extracts, moves through the extraction, water flows faster, more uh, solids come out at the beginning of the cup, and things get a lot more diluted at the end. So I'm going to take one cup of each here. We have cup number one, very, very dark in color, very viscous, really syrupy. Cup number two, which actually looks like a pretty decent shot. There's some good crema. It's a nice color. It's, again, a little bit higher in volume. And cup number three, yeah, it looks pretty watery, almost like a, uh, like an espresso, like a shot of, uh, of more instant, uh, instant, instant espresso. And it's very, very thin. Oh, it's been a long time since I had to taste coffees like this. Oh. But the first shot is so intense. I would use the term salty here to describe the flavor. It is wildly out of balance. Super unpleasant. Uh, 
I, I think of like battery acid. It's just really, really um, acidic, strong, and coating. Cup number two. I can actually taste a lot more of the flavor of the coffee. This is a natural processed coffee from Burundi, which I know is kind of sweet, berry-like, and has sort of some savory notes as well. And I'm getting that here, but again, it's a little flat, a little two-dimensional, and it really has no finish. It just kind of falls off the palate. Number three. Wow, I'm actually getting a lot more of the berry, kind of a strawberry juice, but Juice is a good word for it. It's also very watery, very thin. Not a lot of bitterness, which probably just speaks to the coffee itself. It's not a very, um, it's not a coffee that has a lot of bitterness in it, but the finish is kind of low quality, and again, the body is, the texture is not great. So, like I said, an exercise here to see where you kind of are with your extraction, what needs to be corrected, and to underst understand a fuller scope of flavor with your coffee. You can do this with a drip brewer. Um, I've done it with Chemex a lot. I would, I would line up three individual Chemexes and actually pick up the paper filter as it's brewing and set it into a new one. We used to do that for group tastings. Um, I just think that it is a really fun trick to be able to use. Um, it's a fun group tasting, especially if you can get people <laughs> to drink this first cup, which is truly terrible. Um, and use it to inform, you know, and do some more sensory training. So I hope this was helpful. If you try it, let us know what you think and how it works out. Uh, we'll be back with more videos on the Tone Brewer and more videos about uh, roasting in general here at Mill City. Thanks for watching.